السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless every single one of us and to make us from those who are accepted in this month of Ramadan for having fasted for the sake of Allah and for having stood up in the evenings for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for having recited this noble Quran for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for having been from amongst those who are trying their best to understand the word of the Creator for indeed without the understanding of the word of the Creator himself there is no ways that a man would go forward or a woman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the knowledge of this deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us closer and closer to him at all times and never ever drift us away. What we have been doing in this month of Ramadan is unique and it is different from what we've done in the past. In the sense that every year after the Salat al-Taraweeh, normally I would get up and make mention of certain verses that were read in the evening in that particular section of the Salah or the prayer Taraweeh. A few years back, it was requested that I had gone into reasons of revelations of the verses of the Quran. And Alhamdulillah, that is exactly what happened a few years back. And we went into reasons of revelations, which were so interesting. They bring back the core of the Quran and they bring the understanding in everyone's mind that definitely in order to understand the Quran, we need to understand the context in which the verses were revealed. Without looking at that, it would not do justice to the topic of tafsir and we would not be able to understand the deeper rulings of this Quran. We need to know that every verse that was revealed, there was a reason why it was revealed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us more knowledgeable because definitely knowledge is an ocean that has no coast at all. And one should seek knowledge up to the last moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever make us feel that we now have all the knowledge that we need to have because that will never ever be the case in anyone's life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best. So this year what has happened is there is a certain type of clustering together of verses of the Quran which are connected to a similar topic in order to look at the angles from which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed these topics and it is important to understand that every topic we pick up from the Quran we would definitely realize that it has been discussed from more than one angle at times depending on the importance of the topic Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed some of these topics from more than 50 angles, more than 100 angles. And it's amazing how every time a verse is repeated in the Quran, it is repeated for a different reason. Even the stories of the prophets, may Allah's peace be upon them all. Whenever there is the story of Musa alayhi salam, if it is repeated in the Quran, you should know that it is repeated in order to highlight a different point. Subhanallah. It is not just repeated the same thing twice without the, without the highlighting of a separate point. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. The Quran is the most powerful book because it is the word of the creator of power. Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deeper understanding. This afternoon I have decided to speak on a topic that is very relevant to the month of Ramadan. And I'm sure you would be thinking, I wonder what it is. Because the topics relevant to Ramadan, people would say fasting, someone would say salah, someone would say recitation of the Quran. Subhanallah, the, the topic is the depressing of anger. When I say connected to the month of Ramadan, we need to understand that when a person is hungry, there is an English saying, a hungry man is an angry man. And we realize that in the afternoons of Ramadan, 
The tempers are running on a thread because people's bellies are empty. Your wife does something, you will blurt out 20 swear words. If that is the case, you have wasted your fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that to us through the Mubarak lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَن لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهْلَ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Whoever is not going to fast from bad words, whoever is not going to protect themselves and block their mouths from bad words and evil speech and false witness, then they are wasting their time having abstained from food. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to abstain from food in the correct manner as well as from bad mouthing and from bad speech and from that which is false and deception in the month of Ramadan. And we should realize that the prohibition of that type of language also extends outside the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Anger is connected to forgiveness. Why do we say this? If you would, if you would like to depress your anger, you need to be a very forgiving person. You need to be a person who has a big heart. And you need to realize and understand and think after putting yourselves in the shoes of the other whom you are about to get angry with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Mostly people vent their anger on those who are closest to them and most vulnerable, such as their children, their parents or their wives. Thereafter, their brothers and sisters. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to make us from those who do not consider those who are near us those who are vulnerable and close to us because the best from amongst you are those who are best to those who are vulnerable. Those who are best to, are those, to those who are most vulnerable. When you are the best to an orphan child who has no parents, you are from amongst the best. When you are the best to your wife, your wife whom you are the one who is now responsible of and you know that she cannot just turn this way and that way you know that if she has a complaint she will complain to you to protect her when the person who is meant to protect an individual himself or herself begins to harm that individual then that is the greatest oppression because you are meant to be looking after this person, how would you harm them? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. And this is why when we are best to those who are closest to us, the hadith says, you are now the best of people. Because then when there is someone else who is more powerful, more wealthy, someone whom you don't know their exact standing, it is quite easy for you to be good to them because you don't want to have a bad name. But those you live with 24 hours of the day, it is more important as a Muslim that you look after the way you speak to them. Because that is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us go through some of the verses and some of the angles where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed the issue of forgiveness of people connected to the depressing of anger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the verse I'd like to commence with is, in Surah Al-Furqan, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the true qualities of the believers. And he says, وَعِبَادٌ رَحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they walk on this earth, they walk with humility, not with pride, not with arrogance. When a person has pride and arrogance, they tend to become more angry and temperamental. They tend to, to, to think that they are the ones and they tend to think that they should, are the bosses. May Allah protect us. And this is why pride and haughtiness would destroy an individual. Allah says we need to walk in this earth with humbleness, humility, bearing in mind that you are just a number like everybody else. The best from amongst you are those who are closest to their creator and most conscious of the creator. The best from amongst you is not the tallest or the shortest or not the fattest or the thinnest or not the wealthiest or the poorest. No, the best from amongst you are those who are most conscious of their Rabb, of their creator. That is what Allah says. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is amazing, that the true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they walk in this earth with humbleness and whenever someone ignorant speaks to them, they greet with peace. That means they don't allow themselves to get angry because of foolish behavior and because of foolish statements. If a person wants to control you, all he needs to do is to make you angry. Subhanallah. 
if someone would like, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all, if someone would like, who is a powerful person, to find reason to beat up someone who is weak, all he has to do is swear him. And if he swears him and that person reacts according to the manner in which the television has instructed him to react, and the rest of the world finds it a normal type of behavior to react, then naturally it would give him reason to beat that man up. And this is very clear and manifest where if someone were to swear you and then you swear them back, you now become similar in your crime. But if they are stronger than you, you've had it. Because then they will blame you and still beat you. And they will never talk about how it started. Allahu Akbar. They will say, you the one who swore me. And when you say, no, but you swore me, the reality is no one will hear your statement because the victorious is the one who writes history. In the world, everything we know about the wars of the past, who do we know it from? The winners or the losers? We know it from the winners. And it's possible that it's not even the truth. And this is why what happened in the First World War or Second World War, it's only guesswork, subhanallah. It's only one side of the entire statement. What is happening throughout the globe is only one side of the story because the story of those who have lost, defeated, dead and martyred, nobody will ever know. So when someone is beaten up, what would happen is their, their statement would probably not be propelled as the person who's victorious and powerful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us intellect. This is why don't allow the one who makes you angry to control you. He who can make you angry controls you because he knows if I want to destroy this person, I just got to make them angry. So they intentionally swear you to test you to make you upset. Allah says that is why when those people who want to make you angry, talk to you in a way that is about to make you angry just say peace not war say peace and walk away allahu akbar may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding from that verse the next verse i'd like to make mention of is the leniency of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam resulted in people understanding and flocking together and resulted in people accepting the call of islam even if it meant years later Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran regarding the leniency of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرُ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Allah says it is through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you were lenient towards them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Had you been severe and hard-hearted or harsh-hearted, they would have definitely flocked away from you or they would have definitely dispersed from you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So forgive them عنهم, and seek forgiveness for them and also consult them in your affairs. If they are believers, consult them in your affairs. And when you make your mind up, then trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stop doubting. Allah loves those who trust in Allah. This verse has many lessons. One is we need to be lenient. If we are hard hearted, if we are harsh in our houses, in our workplaces, when we are on the roads, when we are mixing with others, when we are with our friends, if we are harsh and we are severe and we are hard hearted, they will not like us. They will disperse from us. Sometimes they will only be close to us because of our might, because of our authority or sometimes because of our wealth. But in their hearts, they are not with us. May Allah protect us. We would like people who are genuine when they are with us. They are with us genuinely. When they smile at us, you can see the genuineness through their eyes that the smile is indeed a genuine smile. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from hypocrisy and keep hypocrites away from us as well. I mean, then this